Welcome back to another Toddy Walnuts update video. And everything that you see in front of you is what I'm going to be talking about in this video. We'll start here on the left. I have the latest video release from Arrow Video. This is the 4K release of Dario Argento's Deep Red. That is the original art box set. I had planned to do that as a separate unboxing, but I'm just going to put everything together in one video. And since there's not that many things to talk about, this will not be as long as my normal videos are, but it's it, it may drag a little bit. I tend to get to talking sometimes and time rolls like I'm doing right now. I have a stack here from Vinegar Syndrome. We'll be talking about those. I got a little stack here from Severin Films and those guys had a, a couple of nice sales over the past week or two. They dropped a couple of items to uh, one particular item 50% off and I had to grab it. It was one that I had always wanted anyway and it was a little pricey, you guys know, but we'll talk about that when I get to it. And I picked up a autographed autobiography from George Raft. Um, that's really cool. Glad to add that to the collection. So kick back, relax, get a beverage, and let's go through and see what I got. And by the way, my co-hosts are both here. They're both in chill mode. And we have Hannah and Heidi here. So let us talk a little bit about Deep Red. This is the latest Arrow video release. And this is the 4K Ultra HD edition of Argento's Deep Red. Love that cover. It's still sealed, but we're gonna break the shrink wrap and go through all the innards here in this box set but it looks like it may be a three disc set from what I can tell here on the back. We'll go through some of these specs here. You get a new 4K restoration of both the original 127 minute Italian version and the 105 minute export version. So it may just be a two disc set. Uh, it looks like um, disc one is the 4K Ultra HD original version and disc two is the export version. If you guys want to check out any of those special features, you can feel free to do so. From Dario Argento, maestro of the macabre and the man behind some of the greatest excursions in Italian horror, Suspiria, the bird with the crystal plumage, comes Deep Red, the ultimate giallo movie. And if you want to Read the synopsis there. Feel free to do that on your own. It does have a great soundtrack from Goblin. Goblin collabed a lot with Argento on his movies. I think most of, if not all of his soundtracks were done by Goblin. I'm not sure what this was limited to, but I'm thinking probably around the 2,000, maybe 4,000 at most. If anybody knows what the number was, you can comment down below. But here's the side. There's the front again. We're going to go through all this again here in a minute. I'm going to unbox this. I'm going to take the uh, shrink wrap off. But you get a decent sized book. Looks like there's a poster. And then there's the Amory case, which is black. It looks beautiful. So let me pause it for a moment and we will look inside. All right. So the plastic is off. I'll take the J card off has a nice fresh ink smell of a brand new release. You can see that it's got a very dry matte finish and that very simplistic design on the front looks really good. We already looked at the back. I was trying to remember, I thought this movie came out in 1975, but don't quote me on that because I didn't do my research before I started. I usually don't. These videos, obviously, you can tell they're not scripted and I make mistakes and uh, I just go off memory and I just put everything down on the bed and I just kind of freestyle when I'm out here. So um, there, we'll look at the Amory case next. It looks beautiful. Really, really nice. Has all the same info on the back so we don't have to really 
look into that. Here is disk one, that is the original version. And disk two, the art is a little bit different, different color scheme. I actually like that one a little bit better. Kind of has a 60s feel to me, even though I'm pretty sure this movie was from mid 70s, I think 75. And then I'm sure there's reversible art, and I'm going to pull that out really quick. Um, actually, I will pull that out in a minute. I'll pause it. I don't want to wreck anything. It looks like it comes with some art cards here. Very, very cool. We'll go through those one by one. It also has a advertisement card. And we'll put the case off to the side. So here's the advertising card. These are really cool. I'm glad that Arrow decides to put these in. These are almost like lobby cards in their own right. I mean, they're, they're pretty collectible. They're on nice stock paper. Thick, you know, it's uh, very collectible in my opinion. But this is one called Mill of the Stone Women. I think I heard that before, but I'm pretty sure I've never seen that movie before. Looks like it may be another 60s kind of a, a creature feature. I'm not sure if anybody knows and you want to chime in below. And then on the back, I think this is kind of advertising for the Arrow channel, if I'm not mistaken. They have their own digital channel now. They've had it for a while. So let us go through the art cards here. These are really cool too. I happen to really enjoy Deep Red. I think it's one of Argento's best. Upside down. It's a little bit bloody. This movie's a little bit ahead of its time as far as gore. And each of the cards are the same on the back, so I won't flip those. There's an iconic image from the movie, and that's actually been used on covers before. I believe the Anchor Bay DVD had that cover. You guys may recognize that image. David Hemmings. Argento's wife was also in this movie, Daria Nicolodi. That is also Asia Argento's mother. So those were the art cards. I will put those away off camera. Next, we have a 60-page booklet, or book. It's pretty thick. It's a soft cover. Very nice book. We'll kind of flip through it. I'm not going to go too in-depth or too much in detail on this. Just going to kind of flip through because we have a lot more. Actually, not a lot, but we do have some more things to show. Then we have the cast and crew. Write-ups about the film. True Arrow fashion. It's another beautiful box set. The movie is in color. I don't know why they're showing so many black and white images of the film, but it is in color. It's in glorious color. Argento always knew how to use the lighting, and his, his films were very colorful. Very appealing to the eye. Because it was very important for Argento to capture you know, the, the ambiance of the film set, because sometimes, or oftentimes, the background and the atmosphere was actually almost like a character itself in the movies. So let me pause it for a minute. I'm going to put all this stuff back in here, and then I'm going to stretch out the poster, and we'll take a look at that. It is a double-sided poster. Okay, so here is side one, I guess we'll call it. And these posters are a little bit odd sized. It's 15 inches wide and 20 inches long. So that's quite an unusual size, especially in US frames. So that would have to be matted or get a custom made frame, I guess. Uh, here is the back, that looks really cool. I don't think I've ever seen that image before. That looks really, really good. 
very wet. You can see that there's blood pouring out of the female's head. And that that is awesome. You can see the killer's reflection in her blood that's spilled on the floor. That is beautiful. In a macabre way, you know, it's it's very gross, but it's that's very a very clever design. So I'm gonna put the poster away and we'll get into the vinegar syndrome titles I picked up. So these are the titles I pulled them out, got them out of their slip covers. And these are in no particular order, just pulling from this pile here. This first one is called Terminal Island. And this is the 4K release of that movie. I just want to go over the cover art because I think these are definitely worthy of the attention that we give it. These are beautiful slip covers and that art is really nice. And then the back, I don't know if this went by a different title called Mad Dog Killers. Again, I didn't do any research on this. It sounds like a really good movie and it's probably something I'm going to pop in tonight. It's a two disc set. You get the 4K UHD and the regular Blu-ray, I believe. It says, men and women, black and white, taken from death row, condemned to Devil's Island, USA, where living is worse than dying. I believe this had a DVD release, and I think it may have been Code Red that had this. There you can see on the left is a Blu-ray, and then on the right is the UHD. And then it has a reversible cover, which is actually the same image that is on the slip. So these are the two covers you get. And that is Terminal Island. Do get a little paragraph there of special features. There's a new extended interview with the co writer and director. Looks like there's some pretty good stuff on here, some new stuff too. Additional info you get the Ultra HD, the Blu ray set, um, dynamic range, newly scanned and restored in 4K from 35 millimeter negatives, and you do get subtitles. Movie from 1973. It is all region, too. That's pretty cool. I know somebody said that um, for all 4K are region free, but I, I'm not sure if that's true or not, so I don't want to give false information. Maybe some of you guys out there know. But that is Terminal Island. Let us get into the next one. And we have Auntie Lee's Meat Pies. And this is supposed to be a dark comedy. That actress on the front almost looks like a younger Diane Cannon, but it is not her. I thought it was her at first, and I read the back. I was like, no, nah, that's not her, but it has a very good likeness to Diane Cannon. And there's the back of the slip, another beautiful slip. Really, really nice. This looks to me like it would be a trauma film, but I don't see their logo anywhere on here, so I don't think it is a trauma film. You can see Pat Morita. It says it is a black comedy about cannibalism done tastefully. Auntie Lee's Meat Pie is a real slice of life. This is just the regular Blu-ray. And the reversible cover is that same image that's on the disc and also the same image that is on the slip. So I flipped it already. And on the back, it is a movie from 1992. You can see Michael Berryman is also in the movie. And there's Auntie Lee. This again is region free. It was restored from a 35 millimeter negative into 4K. And I will get in if you guys wanna read the synopsis, you can feel free to do that. You do get a, some special features. There's an interview with actor Michael Berryman, Blood in the Pool, interview with makeup effects artist Roy Nyrim, or Kanyrim, I'm not sure how he pronounces it. So Bad It's Good, an interview with actor Richard Vidan or Vidan. Again, I don't know these guys. So if I'm butchering their names, who cares, right? Say Yes, an interview with actor Grant Kramer, 
Recipe for Auntie Lee's Meat Pies by the Homicidal Homemaker. Don't know who that is either. 100 Minutes Running Time from 1992. A black comedy or dark comedy, however you want to categorize it. About uh, cannibalism, Auntie Lee's Meat Pies. Let's get to the next one. The next one here is called Through the Fire. Looks like it's kind of a sci-fi slash horror slash action film. And the slipcover looks really cool. It's made to look like it's stressed and worn out and faded, but it's just the design of the slip. It has a glossy cover to it, really cool. There's the back. Some things never rest in peace. Take a look at the side, and you can see it looks like it has white, like some of the ink is, is worn off or stressed from heavily viewing or heavily handling, but that's, like I said, that's just the design of it. And it has an alternate title, apparently, because I flipped the cover, and it's called The Gates of Hell Part 2, Dead Awakening. I don't recall ever seeing this one myself, but it's possible I have. And there's the disc art. And the reversible cover looks exactly like the slip, so I don't have to pull that out. It's a movie from 1988, all region again, 88 minutes. And special features here on the side, you get the newly scanned and restored 2K from the 35 millimeter inter-negative. You get uh, commentary. Um, it says you get alternate The Gates of Hell Part 2, Dead Awakening. A group commentary track. That's pretty cool. So does that mean that there's two versions of the film on here? I'll have to do a little more research. It sounds like you could watch it in two different, uh, two different uh, versions of the film. second one, apparently, is the alternate, and it has the group commentary. You got interviews. So that's cool. There's also subtitles on here. If you guys want to read the synopsis, there you go. Just pause that. You know what to do by now. So that is, we already looked at the inside. So that is Through the Fire, also known as The Gates of Hell, Part 2, Dead Awakening. This one looked really good when I read about it online before I bought it, called Shallow Grave. It's about a killer cop. I believe, from what I read. A cop that stalks and kills people. Uh, it says here, where the most feared killer wears a badge. It's a really nice uh, slip cover. You can see that it looks like there's a family buried in a shallow grave. I really love that color scheme with the, the blacks and the purples and the lavenders like that together. And there's even kind of a splash of pinkish orange. I'm a sucker for color schemes like that, and this looks really, really good. That cop almost looks like Anthony Edwards, but I don't think it is. But here's the cover. That's the reversible cover. It says, don't turn your back on the law. The road might lead to a shallow grave. Welcome to Medley, Georgia. There's the disc. couple of stills from the film from 1984. All region. You get a newly restored 2K scan from the 35 millimeter vault elements. You get a brand new commentary track with the director Richard Stiles. Commentary track with the hysteria continues. Other interviews and subtitles and if you guys want to read Go ahead and do so. And these are what the two covers look like. Shallow Grave. And if you guys have anything to say about any of these movies, um, feel free to chime in down below. Just kind of keep it spoiler free. Because um, I haven't seen, I don't think I've seen any of these yet. And those who read comments, I don't want to spoil it for anybody else either. So let's check out the next one. Okay, before we get into the next title here, I just want to say I appreciate all of you guys who leave thumbs up and comment. 
I have a goal. I had a goal this year to get 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year, and I'm very short of that. I'm about 400 away with two months to go. Um, and if you guys want to support the channel, the best way to do that is to A, subscribe, B, hit the thumbs up, and C, comment. Because when those three things happen, YouTube is more... Uh, they're more apt to share my video, which they just did on the last video that I recorded before this one. And I got a whopping 3,000 views, which I, that's unheard of for my channel. Usually I get between 500 and 1,000. So I'm very thankful for those of you guys who supported me. And if you want to continue to do so, I really appreciate it. That's the best way that you can support my channel is to leave a thumbs up, comment, and even consider sharing this on social media or with your friends or whatever. I don't really ask that very much at all. I try to avoid that actually. I don't, I never tell you guys to thumb up or whatever, but if you guys want to help me reach my goal or at least come close, you know, I, I raised the bar pretty high. So 5,000 is a long ways away, um, but it's always good to raise the bar high if you have a goal in my opinion. So I want to see if I can get to 5,000 by the end of the year and that's how you guys can help. So much appreciated to those who do. So let us get into the next title here. Okay, so Devil's Story, that looks really cool. I think that's the best looking cover so far. Looks like it's some kind of a Nazi zombie wearing a leather coat and the little SS logo on the collar of the coat. I don't know if that's a vampire or a zombie, I'm not sure, but he's brandishing a shotgun. That can't be good, right? There's the back. Now it looks like it's a monster movie with a mummy. Very, very cool. And then here's the reversible cover. And that almost looks like it's amateurish, but it looks really cool. It just has a really cool vibe to it. Looks like something a high school student would have put together. That must be the original cover. And then that's the commissioned. But this is a French horror movie. There's the disc art. I believe it is English dubbed and it does also have English subtitles, I believe. Let me see. It's a movie from 1986, 76 run minutes running time, all region. And it looks like it has English subtitles. And if you look down here, it looks like it's in English audio as well. But I have not popped it in to verify that. So take that with a grain of salt. But you get the 4K restoration from the 35mm original negative. It says it is pretty... Okay, here we go right here. It says presented in both the original French language and English dub. So there's our answer right there. You get Once Upon a Time Devil's Story Making of featurette. Those are always fun. You get Once Upon a Time Bernard, a brand new interview with the writer-director. And you get commentary by the director. You get the French TV coverage. That's pretty cool. This is a nice little set here. If you want to read that. A young couple on vacation in the French countryside just decide to stay the night at a spooky old castle. Sold. I want to check that out. So we already looked at the inside. That is Devil's Story. Next one up is a horror comedy called Blades. And I believe this is about kind of like a killer golf course. Things that go bad on the golf course. Looks like there's a runaway lawnmower about to chew up that young lady there. Another great cover. Here's the back, just when you thought it was safe to putt. So it's kind of a, a comedy spin off of the Jaws, just when you thought it was safe to go in the water. They're kind of, I guess they're kind of feeding off of that to make this comedy called Blades. Another movie that Seems like it would be put out by Troma. I believe this is actually, yeah, I see the little logo now. That is a Troma. <laughs> That's exactly what Troma would put out, but there are the two different covers. I flipped that one on the right. And then on the back, actually it started at the bottom here. It's a movie from 1989, 98 minutes running time. It is all region again. And there you, again, you can see the Troma logo, bottom right corner. 2K scan from the 35. You get a commentary track. 
with the writer and the director. Get a making of documentary, those are always great too. And you get more interviews there, still gallery, reversible cover. And there is the synopsis if you guys want to check that out. And if you look at the bottom paragraph there, it says a highly original send up of Jaws from the makers of Girls School Screamers, which I just recently watched a couple of weeks ago, a month ago now maybe, which is also a movie that Vinegar Syndrome recently put out. I think it was in their last batch of new releases. And Girls School Screamers was, was a fun watch. Is, is it a great movie? No, it's far from being a great movie, but I still had a lot of fun with it. So I am looking forward to checking out Blades. And But I definitely have to be in a certain mood to watch these type of silly movies. But when I do get in those moods, I like to watch a couple of horror comedies back to back sometimes. But like I said, I have to definitely be in a mood to watch these. But that is Blades. There are the two covers again. I have one more to show for Vinegar Syndrome and we'll get into the Severin pile. And the last one here for the Vinegar Syndrome pile was one that I had pre-ordered and a fellow YouTuber on here, I believe it was I believe it was Film Wolf recommended this one. He said it's kind of like a take on the Seven movie starring Brad Pitt, Morgan Freeman. And he said that Christopher Lambert basically does the Seven act, I believe he's, he said. Um, Christopher Lambert was a, he's in a lot of movies. He was in Highlander, of course, you guys know him as Highlander. And he was in Mortal Kombat, I remember him from. But he's a kind of actor that he's been in just about everything and you'd recognize him when you see him. And he has the kind of face that he makes a good villain. I'm not, that's not a cut down. He just has that kind of like a rugged look to him. But here, check this cover out. I have not seen this movie yet, but I'm really looking forward to it, especially if, even if it's a little bit like Seven. I'm sure I'll love this movie because Seven was phenomenal. And I'm not looking at it to be a Seven clone because that's only, if you do that, you'll be disappointed. But, you know, if you go in with lower expectations, you can still have a lot of fun with these type of movies. But there's Christopher Lambert. A lot of you know who he is already. And if you don't know the name, I'm sure you recognize the face. It says, on the brink of genius is the madness of a serial killer. Definitely looking forward to popping this in and checking it out. A couple of stills from the movie. Now, I don't know if Lambert is the bad guy in this movie or if he's kind of like the cop chasing him down, but I don't want to know either. I'm going to go into the movie blind, as blind as possible. A movie from 1999. It is all region, 108 minutes running time. You get a 2K scan from the 35 millimeter. You get uh, interviews with uh, the director, Russell Mulcahy. And you also get uh, interviews with some of the actors in the film and the composer. And if you guys wanna read that, feel free to do so. But it already does sound good. The beginning of that second paragraph says an ultra stylish hybrid of 90s cop action, murder mystery, and astonishingly gruesome slasher. That sounds really, really good. Hmm. What does that say about David Cronenberg? It says Christopher Lambert alongside character actor Leland Orser and David Cronenberg in one of his few on-screen performances. That is really cool. Never released on Blu-ray, Vinegar Syndrome presents this uniquely sadistic and ultra-stylish thriller in a brand new restoration. Home run, Vinegar Syndrome. Very well done. All right, I'm gonna watch this tonight. So there we have both covers. And again, if you guys have seen this and you wanna comment below, just keep it spoiler-free. So we get into a couple of titles from Severin Films, which I have to admit, I'm way, way behind on their product. I love the company, I think they're great. There's only just enough money to go around, only so much money, and you can't buy everything all the time. You guys know that as well as I do. 
But um, I belong to their fan letter, their email letter that they send out. And last week or two weeks ago, maybe a week and a half ago, whatever, they, they sent me a couple of emails saying that they were releasing, this is the Blu-ray of Jack the Ripper, this is the French edition. It comes in this little paper sleeve for five bucks. And I thought that was really good. And basically all that is, it's the, it's the French version, the international version, I think they're calling it. And I think it's two and a half minutes longer than the regular version of the film and it has I think it has a scene or two with bare breasts in it that were omitted in the other version so and this also is in French language with English subtitles but what it is is basically the replacement now because this was released by Severin this is Jack the Ripper I had this one already this is the Jack the Ripper from 1958 came in a slipcover it was released in 2017 by Severin sold out right away it was a Blu-ray DVD combo, and the Blu-ray was the regular, the complete U.S. version, I should say, and the, let me see here, it was the original U.S. version and U.K. version on disc one on Blu-ray, and for the DVD, it was the European version, it was the French language with English subtitles that had a little bit longer running time. So this is the Blu-ray now, and it just basically replaces the DVD from this set. So instead of having the DVD European version, the French version, now you can just replace it with the Blu-ray version, which I'm gonna keep both of these discs in anyways, and I'm just gonna, I have these in plastic, um, old plastic boxes, and I'm just gonna slide this in with this release on the back and have three discs. I'm just a collector that way. I don't like to get rid of anything or throw things away. I feel like the Blu-ray and the DVD should stay together, and this can also be part of that set as well. That's just the way I roll like that, but and I have not watched the French version of the film yet, but it's basically just in this little sleeve, and it has the, I don't want to put it on the bed, but it has the Blu-ray in there, so it's pretty cool. The, the sleeve is really glossy. It has the French title. Let's see, what does it say in the back? It is the European release version, French with English subtitles, and it has a bonus interview with the director, 1959 85 minutes running time and I believe this one is 83 minutes running time if it says on the back 84 minutes so it's about a minute longer I think it's actually a little bit longer than a minute longer though I think from what I from what I heard it's like two and a half minutes longer for the French version so anyway let's get on to the the next set which I'm really happy to get so how many of you out there have heard of the term FOMO, F-O-M-O? -O. It means fear of missing out. And I think a lot of us collectors have that. We have a lot of FOMO in the collector world because we're afraid that some of these box sets and some of these limited editions and these slip covers are gonna sell out and we're gonna miss out and we're gonna have to pay more money. We, it just happens, a lot of us have that, it's called FOMO. This came out I think about a year ago or longer now um, and it was really expensive I think it was over well over 200 bucks it might have been like two and a quarter 225 bucks and this is the Andy Milligan the dungeon of Andy Milligan collection and I really really wanted this but I didn't have the money at the time and I pretty much gave up on it I didn't think I'd ever get it especially for that price well about a week ago Severin sent out an email to all of us who have an email account with them and they said that they had surplus of this box set and they were selling it for 50% off so uh, I think it was with shipping it was 110 bucks something like that I think it was 99 bucks and it was 110 with shipping something like that and it got to my house in like three days I was really happy about this I have not opened it yet but we will in this video but I'm going to go over the back and just kind of talk a little bit about the box before we open it. Perversely arresting, Andy Milligan was one of the most extreme characters in exploitation cinema. Lurid Annals. You get all these movies here. You get the ghastly ones, The Rats Are Coming, The Werewolves Are Here, which some of these were released by Code Red on Blu-ray, and I have a couple of these already. I have Torture Dungeon, I have The Rats Are Coming, The Werewolves Are Here, but I'm glad to have all these now in one box. 
The Man with Two Heads was also released on Blu-ray by Code Red. Bloodthirsty Butchers was also released. I believe Blood was. But also you get Vapors, The Body Beneath, Guru, The Mad Monk, Carnage, Seeds, Flesh Pot on 42nd Street, Legacy of Blood. I think I covered them all now. Or what is that one right there? Night Birds. So, you can read here on the bottom. He's been described as the Fassbender of 42nd Street, a celebration of hate, and unmatched voice from the underbelly of low-budget cinema. More than a quarter century after his death, he remains perhaps the most diverse name in genre history. Severin Films now presents this cranium-cleaving collection devoted to writer, actor, director Andy Milligan, a gay sadist who pioneered New York's avant-garde theater world and made astonishingly unique exploration movies. On eight Blu-rays featuring 14 films from his New York City and London years, 10 plus hours of trailers and outtakes, interviews and audio commentaries, a bonus CD, and an all new 128 page book by Stephen Thrower that explores the profane madness behind it all. From his provocative underground work through his international scuzz horror classics, experience the venomous legacy of filmmaker Time Magazine calls depraved, degenerate, desperate, and damned like never before. What a box set. That says it all right there. I'll take a look here at the box before we remove the seal. So you get the 128 page book, I believe it said, and then you have like a little, kind of like a uh, digi pack style packaging in there. And then it's all housed inside of kind of a thicker box. But there's Andy Milligan, and some of his characters from his movie, movies. So let me pause it here and we will take a look at this beautiful box set. It is all region too. So in the collector world that we all live in, this is probably old news by now. I'm sure many of you have this box set already. And those of you who don't probably want it or you've seen unboxings of this probably numerous times already here on YouTube. But I like to do my own thing and so we're gonna go through it and check it out the way that we always do here on the channel. But we already went through the box pretty much. I just wanted to show you that it is very, very thick, very sturdy, very high quality. Again, it has kind of like stress marks on the box to make it look like it's old and beat up and been handled numerous times, but that's just all part of the design. Then you get the th very thick book. Again, it has a fresh ink smell to it. I don't know exactly when this came out, but it has been out for maybe almost a year by now. It came out, it says 2021, but I think it came out very early this year, which we're at the end of the year as I'm recording this, we're in November. So you get kind of a contents here. It talks about the discs. That is not Captain Kangaroo, folks. That is the man himself an aged Andy Milligan. Here on the cover, I have to admit, I have a good buddy here on YouTube named Niels Johansson. And that looks a lot like Niels in that picture right there. Niels, if you're watching, let me know what you think. Is that kind of like looking in the mirror and by the way, no homo. Niels is a good looking guy. So that is not a, that's not a um, cut down. It's a compliment. Anyway, very nice glossy pages. Got some stills and some write ups and some nudity. Poster art, all kinds of great stuff. From Severin. This is my favorite release now from Severin. 
I see that they have a lot of stuff on their website that I want but like I said I can't buy everything all the time but one of these days I'm gonna go through and kind of catch up and grab some titles that I just have to have in my collection here is the kind of digipack style packaging it almost looks like a book it's beautiful I really love the way that this looks I've seen other editions that are packaged like this and I really do love editions like this I wish Criterion would have done the Fellini and the box in the uh, Godzilla box set like this instead of in such an awkward box Criterion was Criterion had a 50% off recently it still may be going on actually and I was very tempted to get Fellini for a half price I, I will eventually at some point I just I dislike the packaging so much it's really really oddball sized but here's the ghastly ones really cool color schemes here you get uh, night birds the body beneath Torture Dungeon and Bloodthirsty Butchers, which I have on Code Red Blu-ray. Curse of the Full Moon and the Rats Are Coming, the Werewolves Are Here. The Man with Two Heads. Guru, the Mad Monk. Legacy of Horror. And Legacy of Blood. Flesh Pot on 42nd Street and Seeds. Carnage and Blood. Simple enough for a title, right? Blood. The Ghastly Ones. And the back. An Unbelievable Orgy of Terror. Beautiful set. Really happy to finally have this in the collection. I feel like the price was right too. So I had to had to grab it now half off. And it is the Dungeon of Andy Milligan. If you guys want to comment and let me know which is your favorite in the box set. Or if you had a chance to grab it already. Or if you picked it up for half price like I did. Or maybe you're planning on getting it down the road. Or maybe... I encouraged you to go pick it up now. I think it might still be available on their website for half off. Um, or that may be over, that sale, I think the sale is over. I think it was like a three day sale. So anyway, I'm gonna put all this stuff back. We'll look at the book, I'll do a recap, and we'll call it a video. So the book, simply titled George Raft, is an autobiography of the golden age actor, George Raft, who played a lot of gangster roles in his career and this book was published in 1974 this is a first pressing of it it is signed by George Raft here on the front the dust cover is a little bit beat up but the book came out in 1980 no I'm sorry I take that back the book came out in 1974 George Raft passed away in 1980 and he signed it I think that says to Kathy or two cats I can't really tell what that is best George Raft I ordered this online from a company called Old Bookshop in New Jersey or New Jersey um, and I got a really good deal on this book it has an old kind of musty smell that old book smell the books the pages are very white very clean I will definitely be reading this book George Raft is one of my favorite actors from the golden age of films you can see some of the photos he lived a pretty long life too like I said he died in 1980 at the age of 79 I think he was a big cigarette smoker and I believe he died of emphysema but he was a big time star in his day. And when he died in 1980, he was, uh, he was living week to week. I think they said he was living on $800 a month in 1980. Um, when he finally did pass away, 
they took all of his belongings in one lot and they sold it. They sold all of his stuff for 800 bucks. I wish I could have gone back in time. In 1980, I was only six years old, so I had no idea about money or belongings or memorabilia or even George Raft at that point. But it just seems like it's a shame that, you know, one of the greats of the golden age of films died, you know, kind of on a shoestring budget. I guess $800 a month is a lot more then than it is now. I don't know what it would be with inflation and all that stuff. But that was probably, you know, 800 back in 80, might be 2,000 today. He might have had 2,000 dollars a month, which still is not a very lot. You know, it's not a lot of money to live on, especially I think he died in Hollywood. So even back then it was very expensive. And here's a little flyer that I got from Arrow Video for the Shocktober Returns. I'm going to go through this really quick. You guys are getting ready for some of the Black Friday sales. You know, Vinegar Syndrome always puts a nice one on. I think they started a little bit early. I think they have some sales on their website right now for Vinegar Syndrome. And I always look forward to the slipcovers that they put out that they haven't released yet. But you can see some of the previous titles. A lot of good stuff out there. There's more good stuff than there is money. It's it's a sad truth. But I'm going to do a quick recap for you guys. Let me know if you picked anything up over the past month or so during October, now into November. Let me know which Black Friday deals you're looking forward to, which company you're going to be spending a lot of money with. And just comment, like, subscribe, and that helps the channel grow. So let's do a recap here. Alrighty. We have the original art, Deep Red from Arrow Video. The Dungeon of Andy Milligan. Jack the Ripper, and this is what I did with the little cardboard sleeve. I just tucked it in in the back. It sits in there really nice. So it's, not, it's now part of a little box set that I created. We have Auntie Lee's Meat Pies, Through the Fire. Resurrection, Blades, Devil's Story, Shallow Grave, Terminal Island, and the George Raft signed book. I do have something else coming in the mail. It's a, a signed record that was very limited. There were two versions of it. There was the regular black vinyl. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. Uh, it's sold out right away. It's gone already anyways. Um, there was a I think it was like a clear blue record that sold out in a matter of minutes. Uh, that's the one I wanted. By the time I got online, it was gone. So I picked up the regular black vinyl. And within a couple hours, that was gone. So I was lucky enough to get in. I paid, I think it was 35 bucks for the album. It's signed by the artist. I'm not going to say who it is yet. But like I said, it sold out within the first couple hours. And I see people selling it on eBay already for 400 bucks, which is crazy. I'm not going to sell mine. One of my favorite artists, he's from the 70s. He's still making music today, not quite as much as he did back in the 70s. He's one of the icons of the 70s. When you think of 70s music, you think of this guy. He had one of the best live albums, probably the best live album ever in the 70s, and still today. If you guys want to take a, a guess, Dave, I think you might have a good guess. Anybody else want to guess who I picked up, who had the best live album ever? Uh, comment below and let me know, and I'll let you know if you're right. Anyways, guys, have a great night. Have a good weekend or whatever time you're watching this. Great day, whatever. I, I wish the best to all you guys. So for Miss Hannah and Miss Heidi, I'm your boy, Toddy Walnuts, and I will see you guys next. I don't know when I'm going to. It might be in the new year when I make another video. I'm not sure yet. We'll see what happens. But take care, guys. Welcome back to another Toddy Walnuts update video. Today will be a little bit smaller than most, but I'm not guaranteeing it's going to be a quick video. But I do have a the latest release from Arrow Video. I'm going to go through and open up the Dario Argento Deep Red Original Art box set. That is the 4K release of that movie. 
I was going to do a separate unboxing of that video, but I think since I don't have very much everything here in front of you is what I'm going to be talking about today in this video. I'm just going to go ahead and... 